Hey everybody, how's it going? Um, I will be recording my process of making my Princess Mononoke san cosplay. And so this first video is how I made my mask. So let's jump right in. So before I start any project, the first thing I do is research. Um, it's important to get a lot of good reference images of what you're creating from different angles. This helps you uh, decide what materials you're going to need and also um, the shape and structure of what you're making. So going off the reference images I found, I sketched the basic, basic <laughs> shape of her mask. Um, I included a line down the middle so that when I cut it, um, I could fold it first and both sides would be symmetrical after I done cut after I finished cutting it, what is English? Oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, I cut the shape of the mask out and then after that, I held it up to my head to just make sure the sizing was right and that everything was looking okay. And after holding it up to my head, I realized that it had a weird uh, kind of boxy shape in the middle that I didn't like. So what I did is I put it back on the paper and taped it down and just kind of sketched in a shape that I thought would work better. That way I didn't have to sketch a whole new mask out and um, it was a quick, simple fix. So um, I tried the new shape out and held it up to my head just to make sure that it uh, was the right size and that I liked the way it was looking and I liked it enough that I uh, was ready to pull out my foam and um, trace the shape onto uh, my foam. And it's pretty simple, just use a pencil or whatever you have to trace it on and cut it out. And it did have some rough edges, but I wasn't too worried about it because um, I will, would be sanding it down next. So when you're sanding, make sure you're safe about it. <laughs> um, it is a power tool. You don't want to get your hair caught in, in it. So, you know, tie your hair up and wear a mask and goggles so those particles don't fly in your face. Um, it will make the whole process just a lot less fun and more difficult. Also, put the dang goggles on after your mask because it's a lot easier. I also just realized my mask is on upside down. Do you think being in a pandemic, I'll be pro at this by now, but nope. <laughs> um, yeah, once you got those on all, you know, like a normal person, <laughs> go ahead and start sanding. I would also recommend having some gloves. Um, I forgot to grab mine just because I was an airhead that day. Um, but yeah, sanding makes everything all nice and smooth and just all clean looking. Um, it's, a, it's an extra step that really makes things look pretty nice. So now that I have this smooth jelly bean shaped piece foam, um, I wanted it to have the curve in it that the mask does. So what I did was I used a bowl and a heat gun and just got that jelly bean all toasty. and. Um, uh, once it was all warm, I uh, stretched it over the bowl, and as it cools down, it will keep that shape. And you can repeat this um, as many times as you need to just to get it to a shape that you like. And um, this is a nice way to get curves and armor and stuff like that. And um, I held it up to my hand just to make sure everything was looking nice, and um, yeah, I was happy with it. Next, it was time for my big boy foam. <laughs> this foam is thicker and I wanted to use it for the details that sit on top of the mask. Um, yeah, so I traced it and cut them out of the foam and you can see that they're really jaggedy on the edges. So I went back and sanded it. And this time I got a glove because I leveled up. <laughs> um, you can see the difference that sanding really makes. And I always like to cut things a little bit bigger. So when I sand them, it leaves room for um, what the sanding takes away. And then I cut out the little squiggly design that goes in the middle of the mask and sanded that down as well. Then I pulled out every cosplayer's best friend and worst enemy, the hot glue gun. Um, 
I think the trick to making this work was working fast. And um, if any of the hot glue came out from the edges, I, I used the back of my fingernail to clear it off, but um, it'd probably be a lot safer to use like um, a popsicle stick or something. That way you don't burn yourself. So once everything was glued down, I just primed it with a couple layers of Plasti Dip. This stuff really helps the foam from absorbing all the paint and saves some time. Um, this is what it looked like when it was all ready to go. I got all my paints ready and a plate to mix uh, the colors so I can get an accurate color. I used acrylic paint. I would not recommend using uh, spray paint. I learned this when I made my tracer mask that spray paint, uh, when it bends, it makes these little cracks and it is not great. <laughs> so I mixed a color that I thought was close enough to what I saw in the reference pictures and just applied a first coat. Um, the hardest part is waiting, <laughs> for sure, but um, painting is so much fun um, and it really brings the mask to life. It's why I love this step so much. Um, yeah, just make sure you apply several coats so everything looks nice and even. And once the base uh, of the mask was done, I went ahead and painted the details. Um, it can get a little messy, but if you paint over the red part, you can always go back and paint right back over again. It's, it's not a big deal. Just have fun with it. And also have fun while waiting for paint to dry. I ate some tasty chocolate and listened to my favorite podcast. Here's what the mask looked like um, with all the base colors on, and then I moved on to my absolute favorite part, which is weathering the mask. This just makes it look a lot more realistic and lived in, um, which for San, who's, you know, living in the wilderness, it, it would get kind of dirty and grimy. Um, and so I added a darker paint in the corners and then also some highlights on the eyes. And here was the final result. If I were to do anything differently, I would probably sand it uh, with some sandpaper before I went ahead and painted it just to get rid of some of that texture that's there. But for now, I'm going to just say it adds character and call it good. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Um, I had a lot of fun filming my process and I hope some of you find it useful. Uh, thanks again and happy cosplaying!